Alright, good morning everyone. Chalo, let's go ahead and start our revision sheet session today. People will be starting with the revision for the May 23 exam. Right everyone? Chalo, uh, what are the various things which will be requiring during the class? Number one, uh, I hope you guys have the chart book. People who have an older version of the chart book, nothing to worry about. Just have a pen with you when I am discussing. I think you have the statutory update material which I had provided. People, statutory update material. See, we need three things. One is the chart book. One is the statutory update material which I have provided already. It's in rameshsoni.com under free resources. You can find it. And one, you will need the mnemonic sheet which is there. Mnemonic sheet, I have gone ahead and told you to download. But because when I am going ahead and talking in the class, any mnemonic comes, you have any doubt, you can quickly refer to the mnemonic sheet. Right, everyone? So, there are three things which will be requiring. Now, sir, I have an older chart book which is there. I have a older chart book which is there. Baba, don't worry at all. You can go ahead and download the amendment notes. In the amendment notes, I have gone ahead and provided the amended charts as well. Version 8 to version 9, there are approximately 29 charts which I have gone ahead and provided in the amendment notes itself. Done everyone. Any changes, if you see when I am going ahead and doing the revision, you can go ahead and quickly make that change in your chart book as well. I will remind you once again, it is a revision. Revision. So, it is not a regular class or it is not a fast track class that I will be going ahead and talking about logics. We are not going to talk about logics at all. We are going to talk purely from the point of view of Revision. So that I can remind you what you have already learned. Clear everyone. Whatever you have already learned. Might be you have taken my classes earlier. You have not taken my classes earlier. You have taken classes from someone else. Doesn't matter. Revision is for all. Baba IDT. What I teach. What someone else teach, teaches. Everything is same. Right everyone. So we will be going ahead and first covering the DST portions which is there. And then we will move to customs and at the end FTP. Are we clear everyone? Chalo. Let's go ahead and get it started. Everyone, please come to your chart book. The first, first chart. Please come to your chart book, everyone. The first, first chart which is there. Please come to your chart books, everyone. Chalo. Audio video is fine to all. Can we start, everyone? Chalo. Let's go ahead and start with the first chapter, everyone. Please come to your chart book. The first, first chapter. GST, Introduction, Overview and Administration. Please come to your first, first chapter everyone. People watching at home, please come to your first, first chapter. Chalo. Let's get it started everyone. GST, Introduction, Overview and Administration. The very basic chapter which is there. Baba, there is no amendments in this chapter which is there. Chalo. The first first thing which we go ahead and learn when we go ahead and learn GST is article number 366 of the constitution clause 12A. What is the article number 366 clause 12A says everyone? People, you will have to talk with me. Everyone watching over here, people watching live at home, you will have to talk with me. Everyone over here. GST, what does it say? GST means any tax, it can be any tax which is upon supply of goods, services or both except what everyone? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption, it's over here, that AL for HC. What is AL for HC, everyone? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption, they're talking about bottle over here, saying alcoholic liquor for human consumption pay, GST can't be levied. Can we go ahead, everyone? Chalo. So, it says GST means any tax on supply. So, there has to be a supply of good services or both, except what, everyone? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption. The next one over here is, what do you mean by tax, everyone? What is tax? Tax is a compulsory payment made under an act and it is made to whom? To the government to provide you the various public services which are there. What are the various public services which government goes ahead and provides everyone? Baba, road, infrastructure, healthcare, education which is provided by the government is from the money which has been taken from us. Can we go ahead, everyone? Now, the difference between direct tax and indirect tax. Now, many of you who are, must be revising with me must be thinking, Sir, are they really going to ask the difference between direct tax and indirect tax? Once we are done with the chapter, at the end, I will go ahead and tell you what are the main important points which are there. But as of now, when we are revising a chapter, we will be revising the chapter completely. Right, everyone? People, I want some noise in the class. Chalo, yes. Okay. Direct tax, indirect tax. Everyone over here. 
imposed direct tax is imposed on a tax payer indirect tax is imposed on goods and service whatever goods and service you buy on that indirect tax is being imposed direct tax is what everyone it is imposed on me bakra is also me burden is borne by me what is indirect tax everyone it is imposed on the goods and services which are supplied by me but borne by the ultimate consumer are we clear everyone the next one over here is direct tax is income tax indirect tax is gst and custom gst and customs are indirect tax direct tax is progressive i progress tax also progresses when i am having no income no tax little income little tax more income more tax sir indirect tax is regressive in nature what do you mean by regressive in nature everyone it is same for all income level group right everyone the next one over here is same for all income level group means i went to an hotel bought one masala dosa i paid 5 rupees as tax if anyone who is super rich also goes and buys a masala dosa he also pays 5 rupees as tax anyone who is very poor also goes and buys a masala dosa he also pays 5 rupees as tax it is same for all the next one over here is deficiencies in the existing tax system what are the mistakes what are the mistakes nay baba what are the problems in the current tax system means the existing means the before 2017 1st july what was the problem because of it gst came in cascading effect what do you mean by cascading effect everyone people cascading effect cascade tax on tax one tax pay another tax was being charged for an example when one person went ahead and sold something he manufactured and sold excise duty was charged i bought it again that became part of my cost again on that tax was being charged so tax on tax was being there next no send back credit credit to whom dealer or traders what do you mean by no send back credit to traders or dealer supposingly one manufacturer went ahead and sold me some goods when he went ahead and sold me some goods he went ahead and charged me excise duty that excise duty ka credit was never available to me as a trader or dealer when it was not available to me as a trader or dealer i used to go ahead and make it a part of my cost when i am going ahead and selling so cost pay again tax on tax was starting the next is double taxation because of non integration of what vat and service tax if i am a teacher providing services i will go ahead and charge service tax on my service when i went ahead and buy goods to teach then on that goods i will be charged what vat that vat ka credit i will never be able to use again service tax hence there was double taxation the next which was there several taxes which were there like luxury tax entertainment tax etc were not being subsumed can we go ahead everyone people you have to talk with me can we go ahead the next one over here is various features of tax what do you mean by features everyone for example i go ahead and tell you what are my features hairs eyes correct so we have to go ahead and talk about the various features baba it's a tax on supply gst means what is gst everyone gst is a tax on supply of goods services or both it's a consumption tax what do you mean by consumption tax ultimately the tax is borne by that person who consumes the goods or service the next one over here is it's a destination based tax what do you mean by destination based tax everyone the tax ultimately goes to that state where the goods are finally consumed or destined i went ahead and sold the goods from karnataka to supposedly delhi the tax will go to which state everyone delhi the next one over here is value added tax what do you mean by value added tax everyone whenever there is any value addition tax will be collected by the government one person went ahead and sold me one item i'll be able to take the input tax credit when i go ahead and sell it further i'll be charging output tax output minus input i'll be doing and i'll be paying the tax to the government which is actually only on the value addition which i go ahead and do are you people able to understand everything till here can we go ahead everyone the next one over here is the right side what are the various benefits in gst what are the various benefits because of coming of gst creation of unified national market what do you mean by creation of unified national market everyone one nation one market one tax india has now become a unified national market because of coming of gst we have one nation one market one tax the next one is boost to make in india initiative why boost to make in india initiative everyone because now the tax on tax will not be there the item the commodities which are there will become cheaper and making in india will become reasonable the next one over here is enhanced Im investment now that make in india has become cheaper people from outside india will invest in india when they go ahead or people in india also will invest in india only now when you go ahead and invest in india employment will get generated the next one over here 
is mitigation of ill effects of cascading. Baba, again, tax on tax is gone. What is cascading? Tax, tax on tax. Because of coming of GST, when I buy something, I'll pay GST if I'm a trader or dealer. When I sell, I will charge GST. Output minus input, I will go ahead and do. And I'll pay the tax to the government. There is no burden of tax which will be added to my cost. The next ease of doing business earlier, if I was supposedly registered under VAT also, if I was registered under excise also, VAT ka compliances were separate, excise ka compliances were separate. Now, because it is one tax only, so only one tax can under whatever compliances are required, that has to be done. The next one over is automated procedure with greater use of information technology with the coming of GST. People, with the coming of GST, what has happened now? Processes have become automated. You want to take registration, automatic, correct? Go online, take registration. So basically what has happened because of coming of GST, the information technology, IT means information technology is being used. Greater use has happened with the, with the information technology. Everything can be done now, 24 bar 7. Can we go ahead? The next one is reduce, reduction in compliance cost. How come reduction in compliance cost, everyone? Earlier, compliance under exercise was different. Compliance under VAT was different. Every compliance ke liye, your CA or whoever it is will go ahead and charge you charges. Now, only GST can under compliances. The next one over here is benefit to small traders and entrepreneurs. In GST, for supplier of goods, the turnover limit for most of the state is 40 lakh. For supplier of service, it is 20 lakh. Now, small, small entrepreneurs, small, small businessmen who are there, they will not have any problem that they have to get into registration and all those headache. So, GST in a way has gone ahead and supported small traders and entrepreneurs is what they say. Then, elimination of multiple taxes and double taxation. All this earlier what used to happen, VAT, if I go ahead and if I go ahead and buy something and pay VAT, if I go ahead and provide a service and on the service I am char charging service tax, VAT and service tax was not integrated. But now if I go ahead and buy something, I will have to pay GST. GST can be used against the if I am providing service also, I will charge GST. GST can be used against GST. Can we go ahead everyone? So, these were the benefits of GST. Now, when GST has come into India, when GST has come into India, it says what are the various central taxes which are gone because of coming of GST? What are the various state taxes which are gone because of coming of GST? What are the taxes which have not gone because of coming of GST? Exam ke very, very important. One mark MCQ can come. What are the taxes which are gone? What are the taxes which are not gone? Please take it. Baba, it's a C graded chapter with three marks maximum marks in the exam. One mark matters. Can I go ahead everyone? Chalo, everyone over here. Central taxes which are subsumed. What are the central taxes which are gone because of coming of GST? Everyone sitting in the class, people sitting at home. I want all of you have to talk with me. What are the central taxes which are gone everyone? Central excise duty is gone. Next. Sir, Baba, it's a habit which you'll have to create talking with me. People, you have to talk with me. The next one. CBD and special CBD. What is CBD everyone? Countervailing duty, special countervailing duties which were charged under customs is gone. The next one over here is central sales tax CST. When you were selling goods from one state to another earlier, what was there everyone? CST gone. The next one, surcharges and sales. For an example, service tax may earlier, it was Krishi Kalyan sales, Swaj Bharat sales gone because of coming of GST. Now state taxes which are subsumed. State surcharges and says if anything was being charged, gone, Baba, gone. Entertainment tax, Baba, entertainment tax, which was being charged on movies, etc. earlier, gone because of coming of GST. But you have to be very careful. Entertainment tax charged by local bodies, the municipality, which when they are going ahead and charging any taxes, that is not gone. The next one over here is taxes on lottery, betting, gambling, etc. is gone. Entry tax, whenever any truck used to enter from other state, in a state, entry tax used to be there. Whenever you used to purchase from some other states, etc., Purchase tax was there, VAT was there on sale, intrastate, sales tax, central sales tax was also there, luxury tax was there, all these are gone because of coming of GST. Now we go ahead and charge instead of all these things, what do we go ahead and charge everyone? GST, GST and GST. The next one over here is taxes which are not subsumed into GST. What are the taxes which are not subsumed everyone? Basic custom duty, Baba, whenever you import and export, earlier also basic custom duty was there, now also it is there. Entertainment tax levied by local body still continues. Municipality goes ahead and charges entertainment tax that will still continue. The next one, property tax and stamp duty. Property tax which is charged and stamp duties which are on registrations are still continuing. Electricity duty which is there still continues. SED means everyone, state excise duty. SED everyone with me, state excise duty on alcoholic liquor for 
ह्यूमन कंजम्पशन एंड सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन एच पी मैन एच पी मैन वॉट यू मीन बाई एच पी मैन एवरी वन दीज आर दाइव पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट दीज आर दाइव पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट विच हैव बीन केप्ट आउट ऑफ जी एस टी वॉट इज एच पी मैन एवरी वन हाई स्पीड डीजल पेट्रोलियम क्रूड मोटर स्पिरिट एविएशन टर्बाइन फ्यूल एंड नेचुरल गैस वंस अगेन विथ मी एवरी वन हाई स्पीड डीजल पेट्रोलियम क्रूड मोटर स्पिरिट एविएशन टर्बाइन फ्यूल एंड natural gas please remember this five items which are there on this central excise duty used to be there earlier also now it is also there now this is one of the most important part means uh, taxes subsumed taxes not subsumed one mark one small mcq can come the next one over here is dual model of gst what do you mean by dual model of gst now any transaction happening in india both the government will go ahead and charge the tax both the government means everyone central and the state central government will charge CGST, state government will charge SGST. So whenever any transaction, whether it is service ka transaction, whether it is a goods ka transaction which is happening in India, both the government will go ahead and charge the tax. Central government charges CGST, state government charges SGST. If it's a union territory, UTGST shall be charged instead of SGST. What is dual model now? Both the government go simultaneously goes ahead and charges a tax on a transaction. The next one over here is, please come to the right side first, trade and commerce. What are the different types of trade and commerce that happens everyone? One is intrastate, one is interstate and one is international. But in GST, international is not separate. International has been covered in interstate only. So we have two only, only two types of trade. One is intrastate and one is interstate. What is intrastate trade everyone? Whenever any trade is happening, whenever any trade is happening within the same state, within the same union territory, we go ahead and charge what everyone, CGST and SGST or CGST and UTGST. What is interstate trade everyone, interstate supply? Whenever location of, basically whenever you see intra or inter, you see location of supplier and place of supply, location of supplier and place of supply so whenever location of supplier and place of supplier within the state within the ut it is intra whenever location of supplier and place of supply baba don't see location of recipient you have to see place of supply are we clear everyone whenever location of supplier and place of supply are in two different state two different ut one state one ut and whenever it is two different countries also basically we always go ahead and term it as what everyone interstate and interstate what happens everyone I D S T will be levied. Now, when we go ahead and talk about India, India has how many states, everyone? 28 states. And how many union territories? 8 union territories. Out of the 8 union territories, 3 union territories which are there, which are having their own legislature. Baba, in GST, we go ahead and whenever a UT has legislature, its own Vidhan Sabha basically. Right, everyone? So, we go ahead and term it as state. So, what are the three union territories which are termed as state, which have their own legislature? One is Delhi, one is Pondi. Baba Puducherry. Don't write Pondi in exam and come. It is Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir. So, these 31 states which are there, whenever transaction will happen within the state, we will go ahead and charge CGST plus SGST. The next one is 8 UTs may say, the remaining 5 union territories, the remaining 5 union territories, Without legislature, basically, are termed as UT only. And whenever any transaction will happen within the union treaty, we'll charge what everyone? CGST plus UT, GST. Baba, everyone, can you tell me what are the UTs, Andaman and Nico? Baba, in the exam, students go and think, okay, Goa is a union territory. So, Baba, you have to remember union territory also. Goa is a state. Just because liquor is cheap, students say, ah, union territory. Baba, remember one thing. There are only five union territories now remaining, Andaman and Nicobar. Lakshwadeep, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. These are not separate. This is only one. And then Ladakh and then Chandigarh. Are we all clear till here? The next one over here is again very, very important from exam point of view. One mark can be asked as MCQ. So please be very careful. What are the things over here? It says the various goods and service and the various taxes which, which can be charged. In the exam, they can go ahead and ask a question on this. Please remember. Alcoholic liquor, what are the various taxes which will be charged everyone? Whenever manufacturing is done, state excise duty, whenever it is sold, what will be charged everyone? VAT within the state, VAT outside the state, CST. HP man, what is HP man everyone? High speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit. What is motor spirit everyone? Petrol, aviation turbine fuel and natural gas. Whenever it is manufactured, what will be charged? 
सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी सेलिंग पे विद इन द स्टेट वैट आउटसाइड द स्टेट इट इज सी एस टी द नेक्स्ट वन टोबैको बबर रिमेम्बर वन थिंग टोबैको वेन एवर इट इज मैन्युफैक्चर सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी इज बींग चार्ज एंड वेन एवर इट इज बींग सोल्ड वट इज चार्ज एवरी वन GST. So tobacco is one product where we go ahead and see GST also and central excise duty. Along with that, OPM also come above all these narcotic substances, Indian hemp. Correct or not, everyone? All this pay. What will happen? People are smiling. Indian hemp. When you say, people start smiling over here. State excise duty and what is state excise duty? State government charges state excise duty and what is GST, everyone? Our GST, the new GST which is being charged. So what are the two things on which GST is charged? One is tobacco. One is opium narcotic substances etc can we go ahead everyone and all other goods and service what is charged gst gst and gst are we all 100 percent clear till here can i go ahead everyone the next one over here is constitutional provision not very important from exam point of view but three constitutional provisions are important i'll tell you about it now everyone over here first constitutional provision goes ahead and talks about article number 265 what is 265 everyone no tax shall be levied or collected unless authorized by the law means for collecting any tax there has to be an authority of law for an example gst to be collected there has to be gst act income tax to be collected there has to be income tax act who told this article number 265 that you can't impose also and you can't collect also unless you have the authority of law the next one over here is article number 245 it goes ahead and says whenever the parliament what do you mean by parliament everyone the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the lok sabha and the Rajya Sabha, whenever they go ahead and make a law, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, whenever they will go ahead and make a law, that law will be applicable to the whole of India or any part of India. So, if Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha is making a law, they can make it applicable to the whole of India or any part of India. And then it goes ahead and says, whenever state legislature is making a law, it will be applicable to that state. Are we clear, everyone? Now, just imagine Modi ji also went ahead and made a law, and one state may, state government also went ahead and made a law with law which law will prevail over here now so that there is no fight on a common topic both center and the state don't go ahead and make a law they have gone ahead and divided the power to make the law between whom sure. center and the state now they have gone ahead and article number 246 7 schedule which is there goes ahead and divides the power to make law between whom right. actually what happens the center goes ahead and suggest the law it is law is made by parliament only. Are we clear everyone? So list number one, who will make the law? The parliament will make the law. List number two, state list, who will make the law? The state legislature will go ahead and make the law. And the list number three, the concurrent list in which both the government together will go ahead and make the law. Are we clear everyone? Now, but remember one thing, remember one thing, if there is a fight between the center and the state, if there is a fight between the center and the state, whose law will always prevail? Center ka law will... Article number 254 goes ahead and says, center ka law will prevail. Center ka supremacy is being told by whom? Article number 254. 254, I am not written over here. I am telling you. Now what will happen? Now states went ahead and told, how can center be supreme? Are you guys able to understand? And hence government went ahead and introduced article number 246A. Otherwise, Baba GST ka law, they would have written in the concurrent list only no. But whenever it is written in list number 1, 2 or 3, whose law prevails everyone? If any fight is there, center ka law will prevail. States went ahead and told because of coming of GST, we should be equal. And hence they went ahead and introduced article number 246A. You got a quick recap of the background everyone. People getting it everything? Chalo. It provides power to the parliament and to the state legislature to levy GST simultaneously. What do you mean by this? They provide equal power to the center and the state. Article number 246A provides equal power to the center and the state to levy GST. Center will collect CGST, state will collect SGST. And then it says, whenever it's an interstate trade or commerce, who will have the power to make the law? Parliament. Whenever it is SGST, CGST and SGST, CGST ka law center, SGST ka law state. But whenever it is IGST ka law, who will have the power to make the law, everyone? Parliament. Can we go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is Article number 269A, which goes ahead and says, okay, IGST ka law will be made by whom? Parliament. But IGST will be collected by whom? Whenever one transaction happens from one state to another. For example, I sold goods from Karnataka to Tamil Nadu. The amount of IGST which will be charged will be collected by whom? 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दैट इज बीइंग टोल्ड बाय ओवर हियर आईजीएसटी सेल बी लेवीड एंड कलेक्टेड बाय हुम सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल कीप इट्स पोर्शन एंड द रिमेनिंग पोर्शन विल बी ट्रांसफर टू द स्टेट सो इट सेज अपोर्शनमेंट बिटवीन एंड इट विल बी अपोर्शन बिटवीन द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट कैन यू टेल मी व्हिच स्टेट विल गेट द रिमेनिंग पोर्शन डेस्टिनेशन state people watching at home are we all getting it quickly give me a heads up are we all 100% clear till here i want heads up from everyone if you are not clear also everyone over here now article number 27 oh see okay. 246a 269a one one mark by chance theek okay, everyone chalo now this is the most important part our exam mein two to three time they have gone ahead and asked this please come to article number the most important part of the whole chapter ठीक है एवरीवन आर्टिकल नंबर 279 ए जीएसटी काउंसिल व्हाट इज द जीएसटी काउंसिल बाबा जीएसटी काउंसिल इज जस्ट ए व्हाट इज द जीएसटी काउंसिल एवरीवन इट जस्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ ऑल द स्टेट्स का मेंबर एंड सेंटर का इट जस्ट ए कमिटी व्हिच हैज बीन क्रिएटेड सो इट सेज जीएसटी काउंसिल वाज क्रिएटेड ऑन व्हाट डेट एवरीवन 15th ऑफ सितंबर 2016 हाउ मेनी मेंबर्स आर देयर इन द जीएसटी काउंसिल एवरीवन जीएसटी council how many members are there everyone 33 member how many union member how many state member can you guys tell me two union member 31 state finance minister or tm means technical member taxation minister or any minister which is nominated by that state how many states we have in india 31 states baba don't tell outside the class in the class for gst we have 31 states only 28 plus see 31 states may we have 31 state finance minister from all the states one one state finance minister or any taxation minister or any minister nominated by the state will be there and how many union member everyone two union member can we go ahead everyone who are the two union member everyone one one is union finance minister and one is union minister of state who is in charge of revenue and are we clear everyone the next one over here now listen this 33 members are there gst council 33 member for a meeting to be held how many members are required everyone half of the number of members should be present for a meeting to be held can you tell me half everyone 17 are we clear everyone half means at you don't write in the exam 17 and come you have to write in the exam half of the number of members should be present can we go ahead everyone oh sir 16 can come one kid also can come but all those things are not there can we go ahead everyone now two union members what will be the vote ka weight supposingly they want to go ahead and say oh, gst on one item actually in the 35th gst council the first time this voting system was being used uh, so if you go ahead and see over here it says two union member 31 state finance minister this is taxation minister then minister nominated can we go ahead everyone quorum baba union there are only 31 states five uts which are there for those uts for those uts there is no ut ka minister which will be coming are we clear everyone 31 state ka 31 state finance minister or uh, taxation minister and two union member then we have quorum which is half of the number of member in the exam also write half of the number of members can we go ahead everyone and the next one is majority for decision to be taken what is the majority for decision to be taken everyone Three fourth of the weighted votes of member present and voting. Always remember, present and voting has to be seen. Can we go ahead, everyone? Present and voting. So if I go ahead and tell you, how much is the majority, everyone? It says over here, weights of the votes of center is one third. State is two third of the total votes cast, and majority ke liye you need three fourth. Means if I go ahead and tell you, votes ka weight ka weight is over here thirty three point three three percent for state finance ministers. What is the vote ka weight? 66.67% are we clear everyone and this is total 100% vote ka weight out of this for majority how much is required 75% this should always be divided by the number of members present and voting for an example they want to go ahead and vote saying that gst on lottery should be made that was the first time voting system was used gst on lottery should be made as uh 28% they want to go ahead and vote so now it is 28% only are, are we clear everyone earlier there was two rates which were prevailing now it is only 28% so they want to go ahead and vote with whether it should be 28% so one first of all two union members who are there nirmala sitaraman told yes uh, so per member ka vote is how much everyone it should be divided by the member present and voting 
Nirmala Sitaraman told, yes, I agree, it should be 20, 28%, then it will be 16 point, whatever. 16% approximately. Another union minister of state went ahead and told, I agree, then it should be again 16%, total 33% casted in favor. Now, the states which are there, supposing this 66.67% should be divided by the number of members who are present and voting. So, for an example, out of 31, only 28 people came. Out of 28 people, Karnataka told, lottery is not my matter, I don't want to talk only. Some 2-3 states told, we don't want to talk only. When people don't want to talk about it, those people will not, this will be divided only by the number of people present and voting. So, present is 28, but might be supposingly voting is only 23 or 22. So, it will be divided by only 22. Per person ka vote ka weight will be how much everyone? 3% approximately, that is why I told 22. So, 3% one state told, Tamil Nadu told, yes, it should be 28%. So, 3% in favor. Again, uh, Assam told, yes, it should be 28%, 3% in favor. Like this, the total has to come up to 75%. Are we all 100% clear? People watching at home, did you guys get it? Can we go ahead? Are we all 100% clear till here? Always remember, GST council, GST council, how many members everyone? 33. 33 say, Half of the number of members should be present for quorum. Two union member, 31. State finance minister, union member ka vote ka weight is everyone, everyone. How much? 33.33%, 66.67%. That is 100%. Out of 100%, how much should be? 75% should be achieved for majority. Can we go ahead everyone for a decision to be taken? Very, very important from exam. No, this is not important from exam point of view. Actually, functions they go ahead and ask. Please come to function everyone. What are the various functions of the GST council? The functions of the GST council is to make recommendation to the union and state on taxes, says surcharge to be subsumed. See, all these taxes are gone because of coming of GST. All these taxes are gone because of coming of GST. What are the taxes that will not go? Who decided? GST council, the rate of GST also will decide everyone, GST council, what are the things that will be subject to GST, what are the things that will be exempted from GST, special provision with respect to special category state, can you tell me everyone, special category state everyone, humans of Tripura, you have to remember everyone, what will you remember, special category state means humans, they are also humans everyone, humans of J Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir, can you tell me humans ka H everyone, Himachal Pradesh, U for Uttarakhand, M for Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, A for Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, N for Nagaland, S for Sikkim, Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir. Always remember, humans of Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir are the special category state and special category state ke liye they will make special provision. Date on which GST will be levied on HP man. As of now, GST is not there on HP man, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, everyone. Aviation turbine fuel and natural gas, but it will be levied from which date? The day GST council recommends to government and government will go ahead and issue a notification. So, we will give the recommendation. GST council and threshold limit of TO. TO means turnover for registration. What will be the threshold limit for registration? Sir, for this state will make it 40 lakh. For this state will keep it to 20 lakh. This state will keep it 10 lakh. Who says GST council? Very, very important from example point of view. Can we go ahead everyone? The next one is common portal. Why do we call it as the common portal everyone? Because it is commonly used by state and center. What are the common portals which are there? www.gst.gov.in, ewebillgst.gov.in and e-invoicing 1 to 10. 1 to 10 means it is not e-invoicing 1 to 10. It is e-invoicing 1gst.gov.in, e-invoicing 2. Like this 10 portals are being created. What, what is the use of gst.gov.in everyone? gst.gov.in is being managed by goods and service tax network. It's a company which is there. Now, what is the use of gst.gov.in everyone? For registration, payment, refund, correct everyone. For all this, you can use gst.gov.in. Ewe bill ke liye, you use ewe bill gst.gov.in and for e-invoicing, generation of e-invoicing, we go ahead and use e-invoicing 1. As of now, invoicing one gst.gov.in is being operational. The next one over here is the function. Again, a C-graded question, but they can go ahead and ask, what are the various functions of the goods and service tax network? The company which is there, Baba, their, their job is to go ahead and provide services to the center and state. So, central government being the boss will ask, hey, how much is the revenue collection? How many people enrolled in GST? All this information will be provided by whom? Goods and service tax network. So, it says, functions of the GST and facilitating 
registration when you want to take registration you go to gst.gov.in which is being ultimately managed by gst and computation and settlement of igst what do you think every month center and state will say hey give me 50 percent i give this no whenever you file a return all that calculation happens automatically the next is matching of tax payment detail with banking network whether payments has been received providing of mis report monthly information system report how much is the revenue collection how many people joined uh, the uh, GST this month, all these things are being provided by the GST and forwarding return to the center and state. If I have gone ahead and taken registration, they will go ahead and provide. If my officer is a CGST officer, the return will be forwarded to my officer. Who will do this forwarding? The GST and, and providing analysis of taxpayer's profile, whether this person is taking extra ITC, this person is a risky person, all these things will be provided by whom? The GSTN. Now we have GSPs and ASPs. I want to go ahead and talk about GSPs and ASPs. Although a C graded topic from exam point of view, but still I will go ahead and tell you about a GSP. What is a GSP, everyone? GST GSP is a GST Suvida provider. Suvida means ease. GST Suvida provider. So supposingly this is Reliance over here, and Reliance wants to go ahead and file their return on the GST.gov.in. Now, GST.gov.in may, when they have to go ahead and file their GSTR1, supposingly, they are going ahead and telling the government, in this month, we have 1 lakh invoices. Now, you are going ahead and telling, 1 lakh invoices ka details I have to feed in GST.gov.in while filing my GSTR1, sir, that is very difficult. So, government have gone ahead and appointed some IT, ITES companies which are there, which are known as GSPs. What GSPs will go ahead and do? They will go ahead and take that data from that Reliance, they will develop one software that Software will pull the data from here and push it directly to gst.gov.in. Hence, Reliance ka extra headache of filling the data again on the gst.gov.in will come down. So, this is GST Suvida provider. Now, sometimes what happens? GSPs, which are IT, ITS companies, can't go ahead and create a software. So, they can, they can also go ahead and take the help of ASPs, application service provider. So, the application service provider acts as a link between whom? The taxpayer, so application service provider also will develop that software only, which will pull the data and push it to the gst.gov.in. But now, if I go ahead and tell you, GSPs act as a link between the taxpayer and the GSTN, and ASPs act as a link between the taxpayer and the GSP. Are we all 100% clear? So it says, GSPs are IT, ITS, financial technology company appointed by GSTN to develop application for taxpayers to interact with GSTN. It facilitates taxpayers in uploading the invoices, filing of return, invoices, nahi, baba. actually it happens, is invoice related details are being uploaded. Can we go ahead everyone? And then customize product according to the need of users. So Baba, Tata ka, might be Tata is using some other software. So for them, another kind of software will, de will be developed by GSP. If you are using Tele, Tele for you, the GSP will develop some other kind of software. So they customize the product as per the needs of the People, GSPs take the help of ASPs. GSP act as a link between whom? Taxpayer and goods and service tax network, the gst.gov.in. And ASPs act as a link between the taxpayer and the GSPs. Are we all 100% clear? Can we go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is cross empowerment. Baba, sometime once uh, one question is there in my QA material. Baba, what is the Cross empowerment. What is cross empowerment? Whenever you take registration, you are placed under an officer. Now, this officer can be a central officer also, CGST officer also, and this officer can be an SDST officer also. For an example, I have been placed under a CGST officer and he is going ahead and raising a demand on me for CGST and SGST not paid by me. So, whenever my officer will go ahead and raise one person can make, two people will not catch. You have not paid CGST. Your officer who is a CGST officer will only catch your neck and say, not practically catching the neck, but he will only send you the demand and say, I pay this CGST amount and pay this SGST amount also. He will collect the SGST and later transfer it to the state. Are we clear, everyone? What is cross empowerment? My officer, who is a CGST officer, supposedly, is cross empowered that he can go ahead and demand from me. Whenever he is demanding SGST also, he can go ahead and demand. Who told that he can go ahead and demand SGST amount also? He is a CGST officer. Section number 6 of the CGST Act empowers him to collect the SGST amount also. So, whenever, what is cross empowerment everyone? Proper officer appointed under CGST authorized to be proper officer under SGST or UTGST also. Similarly, under SGST Act, if my officer is an SGST officer, he can collect SGST also from me and CGST also from me and later transfer it to the center. 
आर वी क्लियर एवरी वन नाउ जस्ट इमेजिन एवरी वन माई ऑफिसर इज ए सी जी एस टी ऑफिसर ही डिमांडेड फ्रॉम मी सी जी एस टी अमाउंट ना इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गो एड एंड फाइल एंड अपील अगेंस्ट दिस ऑर्डर आई शुड गो टू द सेंटर अपीलेट ऑथोरिटीज ओनली आई कैंट गो टू स्टेट अपीलेट ऑथोरिटीज इफ माई ऑफिसर इज एन एस डी एस टी ऑफिसर माई ऑफिसर इज ए एस डी एस टी ऑफिसर एंड ही हेज पास एन ऑर्डर अगेंस्ट दैट ऑर्डर आई कैन गो फॉर एन अपील विद द एस डी एस टी अपीलेट ऑथोरिटीज ओनली कैन आई गो हेड एवरी वन सो इट सेज ओवर हियर ए प्रॉपर ऑफिसर अंडर सी जी एस टी इशूज एन ऑर्डर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू सी जी एस टी ही सी एल इशू विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एस जी एस टी और यू टी जी एस टी ऑल्सो फर्दर इफ ऑर्डर पास बाई प्रॉपर ऑफिसर अंडर सी जी एस टी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर एन अपील माई ऑफिसर पास एन ऑर्डर my officer passed an order he is a cgst officer i am telling i will go to the state appellate authorities not possible you have to go to center appellate authorities only so appeal review revision any rectification to be done will lie with the proper officer of cgst only means it will lie with the center appellate authorities only can we go ahead everyone now here we are done with chapter number 1 we have gone ahead and covered everything everyone Congratulations, people! C graded chapter three to four mark is the maximum expected out of this chapter, sir. The important points I have already gone ahead and told you. Number one, one mark. This can be asked. Dual model is okay. GSPs and cross empowerment is a C graded type of question. Cross empowerment, nahi. Uh, GSP I can say C, but cross empowerment I will go ahead and say A graded. It's a good question. Please, uh, good question can come. Article number two forty six two sixty nine A is okay. Article number two seventy nine A is very very important. A graded I will say A graded question from a C graded chapter. You understand right everyone? And then the common portal which is there again a C graded point. Uh, various goods and service you can take care. One mark can be asked right everyone. I'll go ahead and close my revision on chapter number one over here. Congratulations people, we are done. people watching at home are we all 100% clear can we go ahead everyone